maintains the lead. Last time around the streets of Long Beach, and here comes Jen Losey looking inside. He's got running room. Boris is going to take him to the wall. He blocks. He blocks into the corner. There's contact. Oh, and there's Bell. Jen Losey and Bell, they're three wide. Three wide up the short shoot. Jen Losey's in the middle. Boris on the inside. He'll retake the lead. Here comes Jen. I think Boris has got some body damage. Oh! He leans on Jen Losey. Bell goes by for second. Who wants it more? Oh, they're going for it. Bell to the inside for the lead. Justin Bell leans on Morris and takes over. And Jen Losey has an opening. Jen Losey takes the lead. They've swapped it three times. Bell gets turned around. Morris gets by and Bell gets booted out of second spot. Jen Losey out of the final corner will come to the checkered flag. Paul Jen Losey will score the win. This is one of the greatest Trans Am races I've ever seen. Welcome to the Trans Am Grand Prix of Long Beach, round two of the Trans Am series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup here on one of the most famous street courses in racing. We've just relived those fabulous final moments of last year's race. And one of the drivers who was right in the middle of all that starts up front here today. He's with Calvin Fish right now. Well, Lee, is a totally different proposition for defending champion Boris Said here today. Remember in St. Petersburg, he started all the way at the back of the grid, made it to a podium finish. But, Boris, we finally see you alongside Scott Pruitt. We expect some fireworks. What do you think? I hope so. I mean, uh, it was a lot harder starting from the back at St. Pete, but uh, I'd like to think I'm like the U.S. military. I got a better plan this weekend. Superior car, superior force, and uh, hopefully we'll do like our armed forces did overseas, and I'll kick his ass. <laughs> that sounds good. Last lap here last year, Paul Genelosi said that was the best race he's ever seen. You didn't win that one, but it was spectacular. Yeah, I mean, it was. We don't agree on much, but I agree on that. I mean, that was a lot of fun when you get to race close like that. And, uh, you know, hopefully this year I'll come out on the better end of it and uh, give a good show for my new sponsors, New Century Mortgage and uh, everyone from ACS and GE Access. Boris looks like he's ready. Well, one of the drivers in the mix in that fight last year is at the back of the grid this time. Let's go back to Brian Till for that story. I certainly don't remember ever seeing a better Trans Am race and a better Trans Am finish. The guy who, only guy in the field who's ever won multiple times here is Paul Genelosi. He's got more starts in Trans Am than anybody, more top five finishes than anybody. But, Paul, you got a long way to go if you want to repeat this thing, buddy. Well, you know, I, they made me buy a ticket <laughs> right back here a few yards back. It's going to make it fun. Scott's going to give uh, everybody a heck of a race. Johnny Miller's up there. I know he's going to be pushing Boris. Just keep your eye on me. Well, keep your eye on him for sure. You saw that finish last year. If anybody can come from the back, it's this guy. Pay attention. Could be exciting. Well, for Scott Pruitt, it's been a perfect comeback year to Trans Am Racing. He started on the pole in St. Petersburg and translated that pole position into victory. And he comes here to Long Beach. He's won here before. He almost won twice, ran out, ran out of gas on the last lap. But he starts today's race from the pole position. But Scott Pruitt... You're inside the cockpit, you're ready for round two, but a different proposition this weekend, mate, with Boris right alongside. A little different proposition, hi to my family at home. It's gonna be a little tough. I mean, this Long Beach is always one of those races, pretty crazy, turn one, always can be that way. But I also gotta say to the speed guys, hey man, don't be busting me too hard on the photograph that came out in the picture. Things aren't what you think. I gotta just clarify that right now. Talking of that picture, I actually pulled this off Scott Pruitt's dashboard, believe it or not, right before the off here. This is a little love fest going on between Tommy Dreesey and Scott Pruitt yesterday after qualifying. Lee Diffie, Tommy Kendall, I'm not sure what to make of this. <laughs> I don't think Scott is either. He's been getting a very heavy ribbing all day long. I'll tell you what to make of it. He was sharing a tender moment with Tommy <laughs> Dreesey. Both he and Scott and his wife, Judy, said, hey, take it easy. The kids are watching. I'm, the kids are gonna, I'm sure the kids are going to be asking, hey, Mommy, why is Daddy hugging someone? <laughs> else i hope he doesn't join the other team that but that's just me let's get down to the serious stuff great to have you in the announce booth this weekend uh, filling in for bill adam what are your thoughts on on the way that uh, the trans am group are administering the rules this year bit of controversy this weekend with genelosi being sent to the back uh, an infraction with ride height there after uh, qualifying well that's actually probably a good sign as far as i'm concerned they did that to boris said and with paul genelosi competing in the series and also running the series the conflict of interest is obvious and how they administer these things is important if they had let paul slide 
wide after contact with his nose being a little too low would have been a bad message. On the other hand, Boris got fined heavily before the start of the season. He was fined for some comments saying that the Mustangs needed some help. All he wanted was aerodynamic parity. They hit him with a big fine. Since then, they've gone to the wind tunnel and agreed with Boris. They haven't refunded his $5,000, but they've given the Mustangs a little bit of help. Let's talk about Trans Am racing here on the streets of Long Beach. I mean, unfortunately, you never came up with a win, but you had some great races, and this place just seems to produce wonderful racing for Trans Ams. Well, I mean, Long Beach is the biggest race, road race in North America, and that that's a champ car race, but the Trans Ams is the same thing. Growing up here right near Long Beach, it's the one I always wanted to win more than anyone else. Was never able to do it, but that's what makes it sweet. Anything can happen here and usually does. We talk about that wonderful finish last year. Let's take a look at this mayhem in 2000 involving Chris Neville, Johnny Miller. Talk us through this, TK. Well, Neville and Miller get together, and you see Tommy Dreesey sneak, picks his way through the wreckage and gets out front. This was one of Tommy's early races, pulled his way through. It's the only Trans Am win he had. I'm sure he couldn't believe his luck at this point. Probably looking for a hug from Scott Pruitt after that one. But <laughs> and here comes Lou Gelati uh, with the damage plowing right into the tires. That was one of the wackier finishes. Last year was just pure good racing. And there is Tommy Dreesey. He was right place, right time, and he is a local lad from Hollywood, and he just cruised all the way to his one and only victory in Trans Am racing. Dreesey was delighted to do that. He would love to do that again today. There he is in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the movie livery. Tommy starts from sixth, and he'll have hard work to make it all the way up to first. Plenty more. The V8s will roar here on the streets of Long Beach after this. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach for the Trans Am Grand Prix of Long Beach. Round two of the Trans Am series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. And as the cars roll around for the first time, we're just moments away from the start of round two. Tommy Kendall, talk us around this 1.9 mile circuit. Well, I've got big shoes to fill after uh, Willie T's uh, track map last year where he was, it took about two minutes and he was drawing like stick figure, corner figures and so <laughs> forth. But anyways, the secret here is getting off the hairpin turn 11, getting down the straight and breaking zones in turn one and turn nine. The other parts are important, but those are the places where the real time is made. Now early on, the guys have to watch the tire wear because if they take too much out of the tires early on, they're not gonna get a good shot out of that all important turn 11 hairpin. Scott Pruitt's return to Trans Am Racing is allowing him to notch up the records, that's for sure. And he adds another pole position to his career stats as his second consecutive this year and third Long Beach pole. Starting alongside him, Boris said he starts in the same position as last year's Long Beach race, but Boris still searching for that first win on the streets of Long Beach. Mike Lewis, that's his best start since Mid-Ohio last year. And then we go back to Johnny Miller, also looking for win number one here at Long Beach. Stu Hayner, Tommy Dreesey, they make up row three. Row four is Bobby Sack, the best of the rookies. He starts alongside Jorge Diaz Jr. Back to row five, Greg Pickett, Max Lagarde, the only Camaro in the field today. Malcolm and Mike Davis, we welcome Mike back to the series. Simon Gregg will start alongside Randy Ruhlman, who got moved back after changing an engine after qualifying, so he starts a little further down than where he was supposed to. Claudio Burton, and then, as we heard earlier, Paul Gentilosi starting back on the eighth row with plenty of work to do, but just like Boris said did at St. Pete, we will keep an eye out for him coming through some new guys in the series. Jones, Nolte, and Joey Scarello returns. We've got three onboards to enjoy today here on the streets of Long Beach. The first one is our top place rookie at the moment after just one round of this year's championship, Jorge Diaz Jr. He will show us this shot. Stu Hayner also supplying the onboard pictures. Good strong finish. Had some mechanical problems at St. Pete. He'll be looking to improve on that. And Scott Pruitt, our pole sitter, carries these pictures. And will it be a clear track right throughout the day? We will find out. Calvin Fish, what do you have for us? Well, I think Tommy hit the nail on the head. Tire conservation here is really going to bring home a victory here today. I spoke to Boris, said he said, I'm going to be in cruise mode until the last 15 laps. With Boris, of course, cruise mode means two tenths off the track record. But I think everyone is going to be watching those tires as the fuel load goes away. Let's go down to Brian. Yeah, cruise mode for Boris. That's a good one there, Calvin. You know, you talk about guys that want to win this race. What about Johnny Miller? Genelosi's done it. Dreesey's done it. And Scott Pruitt's done it. What do they have in common? They're all teammates. Miller wants to add a win to the team. Here we go on Long Beach. We are away, and Boris said immediately pounces on Scott Pruitt side by side, heading down into turn one. Pruitt has the better line, and he holds ground. Miller jumps into second, and Boris tries the switch back. 
And he pulls it off back underneath Miller. Miller tried to tuck in on Pruitt's bumper. Morris didn't get a very good start. You can usually make a go of it on the outside there because that's the preferred line. A little bit better grip under braking. Keep an eye out back in the pack for the Red Jaguar of Paul Gentilosi making his way through as well. Bobby Sack was right up with Stu Hayner. Here's Gentilosi on Claudio Burton trying to get by the Panos, but look at the margin that Pruitt has already opened up. I'll tell you what, Scott was complaining about being a little rusty at St. Pete, and that all went away by qualifying at race time, and he uh, is, has a different mindset. He says he's doing it just for the fun of it, but he is a real competitor and certainly hasn't lost a step. Ride with Stu Hayner, let's have a listen. That's Tommy Dreesey in front. He was able to get by Stu on the start. We've had an incident, Simon Gregg and Claudio Burton. And that's at uh, turn eight. They seem to be able to get themselves sorted out. Marvin Jones, Greg Nolte and Joey Scarello trying to get through, they do that now. Simon Gregg facing the wrong direction. That's Mike Davis at the back of the pack. He must have had some problems at the start as well. That's right about where Paul was running. He, last time we saw Paul, he was running right there with Claudio Burton. It's, uh, uh, maybe it got by Claudio. It'd be interesting to hear if maybe he got into Simon Gregg. Now in Paul's, uh, it's in Paul's interest to not only get by people, but also to have a few yellows along the way. Um, because if he can get by some guys, get the gap closed up again, get by a few more guys without some yellows at key times, it's gonna be hard for him to get all the way to the front. Take a look at this. After lap one, Boris said has closed that margin on our race leader, Scott Pruitt. It's the Jaguar of Pruitt, the Ford Mustang of Boris said, then back to the second rocket sports car of Johnny Miller. Let's take a look at a replay of the start. As they come to the line, set on the left of your screen, Pruitt, the outside right. Talk us through, TK. And Scott just had a little bit of a jump. He is the pole sitter. They're supposed to key off him, and he was able to convert about a nose lead. And I think Boris backed off to maybe try to get back in behind. This is on board Stu Hayner's Corvette. And already Tommy Dreesey had got by. Now let's take a look. On board with Scott Pruitt. This is what it looks like to start from Paul and have a clear track ahead. There's Boris. So I Seth did draw alongside. Yeah, Boris was able to get up alongside after the initial jump. And there's Boris coming down the inside underneath Miller. And that's a that's a, a, a really strong move on cold tires, but a decisive one. He cannot afford to let Pruitt get away. Michael Lewis tucked in nicely there into fourth. This is back to live pictures now. Let's get down to Calvin. Well, Boris's teammate Mike Davis made his way to pit lane early here, Lee Diffie, and the question is, can they get this engine run? It's a fresh engine after qualifying. They blew a head gasket, new engine in this car, but right now, Joe Huffick here trying to get this thing running on all eight cylinders. Tough break for Mike Davis, back in his return drive to the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Meanwhile, up front, it's getting very close. There's less than a second between Pruitt and Said. Meanwhile, let's look back at Paul Gentilosi, three times Trans Am champion. New livery on the car this weekend. As he chases Greg Pickett. Already up into the top 10. It's amazing, uh, Paul Gentilosi, you know, pretty jovial. If this would have happened to them, him having to start last in the middle of a championship run, you would not have seen him be as, as blasé about it. But uh, since he's only running selected races and he owns the series, I guess it's in his interest to put on a little bit of a show. He'd rather start up front and dice it up with Boris and Paul, or Boris and uh, Scott. But coming from the back here, he needs to get by these guys. He can't afford to waste too much time getting around these back markers because those guys up front are running quite a bit quicker. Four times a winner here on the streets of Long Beach. He's going for a record fifth. He is the only multiple winner here at this venue. And he will have a lot of work to catch up to the front runners today. He sizes up Greg Pickett and a fairly easy overtaking move on the former Trans Am Series champion. Calvin, tell us more about Genelosi. Well, we talked about Genelosi's woes in qualifying. He got in the back of Bobby Sack, hit the wall a couple of times. The handling had gone away on him, he said, and what really happened was he's got a new engineer this, this weekend, Nick Shaw, who's had a lot of success here in Trans Am racing. Should be a successful partnership, but Paul asked for a shock adjustment and Nick misinterpreted it and went the wrong way for qualifying, and hence Paul was kind of overdriving the car, but they really regrouped in the warm-up last night there in the final practice, excuse me, he was the fastest man on the racetrack you ride with Jorge Diaz jr. currently sitting in eighth 
And here is Paul Gentilosi. Really catching up hard on him. And that car of Jorge Diaz Jr. has spent time at the Gentilosi uh, workshop. New body, new engine. The whole works on that car. Meanwhile, there was an overtaking move up ahead. Bobby Sack got through on Stu Hayner. Yeah, that, that's two cars on that lap alone for uh, for Paul Gentilosi. You have the two Revolution Motorsports vets in front of him going at it, their inner team rivalry. Look at the shot that Gentilosi got off the hairpin. He's going to have a shot at Hayner here, too, I think, down in turn one. You ride with Stu Hayner, Paul Gentilosi, growing large in this shot. Brian. Lee, I just went to uh, Don Sack, Bobby Sack's dad, and I said, you know, you got teammates out there racing with each other. What do you tell them? And he said, I tell Bobby to drive away from Stu. That's what I tell him. Seems to be a couple of puffs of smoke coming out of the back of Hayner's car, Tommy. So the rookie is ahead of his more experienced teammate. We'll find out more on this Stu Hayner situation as he gets worked over by Genelosi. More after this. Round two of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tyres Cup continues here at the Grand Prix of Long Beach. You're looking at race leader Scott Pruitt being hounded by Boris Said, the reigning Trans Am Series champion. It's Jaguar versus Ford Mustang. And Tommy, I know in the break, you were impressed to see that Boris could stay within a second of Scott up to this stage. Yeah, and he's, uh, he actually, the last couple of laps, he's run a couple tenths quicker. So, I mean, this, if I'm leading, I'd like a little bit more of a gap. I'd probably like to keep it at just over a second. They have this new rule. They, there's the potential of a competition yellow between 70 and 90%. What that does, if you're leading, there's no sense putting your head down and trying to pull away. If you give yourself just enough gap to deal with lap traffic, give yourself a little bit of a choice and not have to get by in the second you get to them. Well, oh. this will be interesting. There was a bit of niggle between these two guys in qualifying. Paul Gentilosi hit Bobby Sack, and, well, you could argue either side of the fence was Bobby holding him up or, or whatever the situation was, but there was quite a bit of fist-punching and finger-pointing going on. Not fist punching on each other, I should uh, add, but just in the air, and they were sort of pointing at each other. So, and I know that young Bobby Sack was pretty wound up about it, but he won't be able to argue with this. Gentilosi has superior speed and had the position and gets through, and that battle's over. Now, Gentilosi continues this strong charge from 15th, is now in sixth. And that lap, when he was closing the gap on Bobby Sack, was a 22 flat for Gentilosi, which I believe is the fastest lap of the race. So he's a good ways behind. He's 11 seconds behind the lead. It's going to be hard to make it up a couple tenths at a time, but he has the speed if he's able to get a yellow. We've been talking about Revolution Motorsports with Stu Hayner and Bobby Sack. Now let's hear from the team principal, Brian. Well, Lee, I'm standing here with Don. Don, got to be nerve-wracking for you two cars out there but obviously one of them with being bobby fighting for the rookie of the year deal and with the problems he had with gentilosi and qualifying a lot of nerve yeah yeah but uh bobby and Stu are doing a great job uh i was just watching uh bobby and uh, paul go at it there and uh paul passed bobby clean this time and uh bobby gave him room a lot of good things going on with this team i know that you have some new sponsors that come in for you guys too yeah yep uh, gmac commercial finance is on board uh, Trenton Forging's been with us for a long time. Uh, we've got a new one that uh, we're right there with. I can't announce it, but we'll have it for the next race. And this Rookie of the Year thing, you want that bad? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a great race between Bobby and Jorge. Uh, and Jorge Sr. and I, we just, we, you know, we're, we're two fathers with two sons that just love to watch him race. It's a great family deal we got going. A lot of emotion here, Calvin. Well, certainly Paul Gentilosi and Bobby Sack would love to chase down those leaders, but we believe that both Boris said and Scott Pruitt are just running to a pace right now. I checked in with Troy Cargill, who oversees Scott's car. He said, we just want to run a pace and have a car at the end. He said, and we're just hoping that Boris is doing the same. So they believe that Boris will have something for them in the final stint of this race. But he said, it's been a totally different racetrack to St. Pete two street circuits, but he said this one, we really struggle with the balance. A loose condition made a bunch of changes and the cars finally come good. One aspect of our coverage that we're proud to bring you this year here on Speed is the sounds of Speed. Let's ride with Scott Pruitt, our race leader, and enjoy the natural sound. Tommy, does it make you feel like getting back out there? Uh, 
absolutely. I'll tell you <laughs> what, I, uh, I needed a break, but I've had a bit of one, and uh, I started missing it a while ago. Um, whether that results in a comeback or not, I'm not sure, but these things uh, are very close to my heart. This is as good as it gets as far as I'm concerned. Coming out of the hairpin, you hear how they feed the throttle. There's some bumps there when the, car, when the engine comes up on the cam. It really likes to spin those tires. Uh, looks pretty tidy coming off there, but behind him, Boris looks really, really under control. He's, he has a real long exit. He's not, you know, trying to pinch the car at the last second to keep her in the wall, have the car go sideways. He's letting the car tuck, the nose tuck around a little bit further and really squeezing the throttle open nicely. And he's not losing any time doing that. So that bodes well for Boris late in the race. Pruitt continues to lead from Boris said Johnny Miller running in a very strong third from Lewis, Greasy and Jen Losey continuing the charge. Earlier this week, uh, drivers from Rocket Sports made the most of being here in California, close by at Irvine. Tommy Dreesey, Paul Gentilosi and Scott Pruitt visited the Premier Auto Group, Jaguar's home base here in California. They had a uh, Jaguar Employee Appreciation Day and the guys signed autographs, met the employees and talked to them generally about the BF Goodrich Tires Cup and especially these Jaguar Trans Am cars. And of course, the series leader, Scott Pruitt, was on hand as well. The employees thoroughly enjoyed it. And for Jaguar, that's very important. Don't forget that we have a, a great history at Le Mans and, and in Trans Am of winning races with Jaguar engines and Jaguar cars. So for us to be back in it this year is very important. So it's absolutely integral in our marketing uh, programs this year and next year as we build the credibility of Jaguar on the track in North America. And let's not forget that later this year we will see Scott Pruitt debut that brand new 650 horsepower Jaguar, genuine Jaguar engine. That's right, and, uh, 650, I always scoff at that. These uh, Trans Am cars since I left have gone up probably about 50 horsepower. They're over 700 horsepower now. I would expect the uh, four valve one to do the same. Now you have Jen Lozzi who's pulled himself up here in the sixth place and he's running quicker than the leaders. Now, if I were Paul, Paul only has one speed, so this is probably maybe Whoa. pointless. They see Greasy and uh, Simon Gregg getting together. Simon Gregg a lap down. Oh, it's hard for Paul to sit there. I mean, all, all that hard work to, to put some good laps in, he's losing, you know, probably two, three seconds right there, bottled up behind. Tommy Dreesy's Simon. been able to skip away. You'll notice a new livery on Tommy Dreesy's Rocket Sports Jag as well. LXG, which is a, uh, a movie league of extraordinary gentlemen. Tommy works in association with the movie business here in Hollywood. There is Tommy Dreesey chasing out after Michael Lewis, who's done a very strong job so far. He's some eight and a half seconds behind Scott Pruitt, but maintains that fourth position. So Dreesey pressing hard. Now this is kind of an extension of Tommy's business. He's built himself a really nice business in Hollywood. When you go to the movie theaters, you see those stand-ups, three-dimensional stand-ups in the lobby for the coming movies. Tommy Dreesey virtually owns that business, Dreesey Advertising, and uh, always coming up with unique things. This is probably the most unique movie display he's come up with, the most expensive one, too. We actually have a little piece Tommy uh, specially made on Dreesey Advertising later in the broadcast, which we'll show. And while this battle for fourth continues, Genelosi back in sixth, then Bobby Sachs, Stu Hainer, Jorge Diaz, and Greg Pickett round out the top ten. So still, Bobby Sack is best of the rookies. Up front, the margin is still less than a second. Scott Pruitt to Boris said, eight tenths of a second in it. Here we are, we ride with our race leader. Pruitt, who has not driven the car since round one at St. Petersburg in Florida was struck down for about a week. He was quite sick after the Mexico champ car round. But he's bounced back and back to full fitness and feeling much better. And Calvin Fish, he's strong out in front, but Boris is not letting him go. He isn't, and I really want to pose this question to TK. Tommy, I mean, do you think that Boris needs to make a statement here in round two? He wasn't in a position to do it round one in St. Pete. I mean, we assume that both these guys are pacing themselves, but if Sky has a little bit more, he's just going to take the victory away from Boris. Does he need a wrestle him up a little bit and make a statement here at this stage of the race? 
Well, I mean, whether he needs to or not, he definitely wants to. I mean, you forget Boris is the king. You know, he won the championship last year. That long, elusive goal won the championship. Scott Pruitt comes riding back in into the, the picture and just cleans up at St. Pete, helped by Boris starting dead last. So Boris wants both Scott to know and the fans to know, hey, you got if you're going to win this series, you got to go through me. I'm the defending champion. So um, it's hard to tell how hard these guys are running at this point. But he def this is an important race. He does not want Scott to build momentum, season-long type momentum, at the expense of him. Lap 13 in the books. 38 still to come. Plenty more here on Speed. the 12th time the Trans Am Series has visited the streets of Long Beach, California, and Scott Pruitt continues to lead. This has been a very positive place for Scott Pruitt's racing, whether it be in go-karts or in champ cars. He even won the uh, Toyota Pro Celebrity Race a couple of years back. And, Something and a, that... Uh, a couple go-kart races as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what were you about to say, Lee? I was going to say, you almost did that last year. I almost did that last year. <laughs> yes, I did. I did do it in 97, <laughs> but I uh, last year is the one that people remember, unfortunately. <laughs> if you've just joined us, Lee Diffie here in the booth with four times Trans Am champion Tommy Kendall, Calvin Fish and Brian Till down in the pits. Meanwhile, let's have a look at this battle. Jenna Losey coming up on one of his drivers, Tommy Dreesey and Michael Lewis not too far up. They come past Joey Scarello and Jenna Losey sizing Tommy Dreesey up. Fastest lap of the race still belongs to Paul Gentilosi, who has come from 15th on the grid to 6th. Calvin. We're down here with Nick Shaw. We're talking about the fact that Paul's running the fastest laps of the race out there, Nick, but is that what you want to see? How patient does he need to be to have a race car to take it to the victory, possibly? I think we have a good race car, and he's, he's not hustling it too much. We can run that speed and conserve the car. So it's, it's a pretty good pace. He just needs to pick his time, get Tommy, and the next car, Mike Lewis, and we'll, we'll be right on track. We'll get the competition yellow, and we'll be right up there in the top three. Sounds like they have a plan. He says the top three. I've got a feeling he wants more than that today. Something we should elaborate on there, which was brand new at St. Peter. And if you missed the St. Petersburg round, Trans Am has introduced something new called a competition yellow. Tommy, it, uh, it occurs between 70 and 90% of race distance in the essence of creating close racing. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, it's a, it infuriates you when you're out front. Um, sure. They used to do it before, and they, they just weren't uh, as honest about it. So, uh, I mean, I'm all in favor of spicing up the show. Uh, in this instance, it's, it's, it's really made for this kind of a situation. Knowing that this is the case, um, it's the steward's discretion. And, uh, I mean, if I'm the steward and I'm wanting to spice up the show, if Paul Genelosi picks his way up to third spot, you uh, throw a competition yellow at the end and let these three guys go at it. Again, if you're up front, it infuriates you. But what those guys are doing, they're factoring that into their strategy. They know it's probably coming. So that's why Pruitt and Boris are running in the 23-second range. You see Scott run a quicker lap every once in a while, I think, when he's getting to traffic to build himself a little bit of a cushion. But they know it's coming. So it, it, in some ways, it takes the incentive out up front. So that's one of these unintended side effects. If I'm up front, I'm sure as heck not going to extend myself. I'm going to save as much car as I can for that last 30, 10 to 30 percent, wherever that competition yellow comes. Sometimes you won't have one if they don't feel you need it. But this is a case where it's, it's kind of built for this. If Paul can get up in the third spot, bunch him up and uh, let him go. Gentilosi is really starting to hassle Michael Lewis here. Lewis got held up a little bit behind Marvin Jones. Now Gentilosi down into turn one. Great move. Thanks very much. Job done. So he now moves up to fourth place as only Johnny Miller, Boris said, and Scott Pruitt ahead. Brian Till, what do you have? Well, David Steele's the crew chief for Michael Lewis, and David might run good all weekend long. Right now, is he saving something for that potential competition yellow, or is it just go for it? I think we're saving something for the end. Uh, he struggles a little on a full fuel load, so we we'll burn off a little fuel, and we'll see if we can't get that crank up to the front. Take that lighter car on those BFGs and put it up to the front late in the race, that's the strategy? Yeah. You heard it, guys. He's holding on to the end, just like you were saying, TK. And Michael Lewis was very frustrated with his run at St. Pete, where he ran ninth, and he said they were simply lost with setup. They went away. They've tested a couple of times since then, and he feels they're much more on track. You look back from Pruitt to Boris said, lead two from Miller and Genelosi.
who will join the list of legends and be named 2003 Driver of the Year. Now you, the fan, along with a distinguished media panel, will decide which driver in American motorsports deserves this prestigious honour. Log on to speedtv.com to cast your vote for this quarter's nominees. And here they are. Keep in mind that this is for the first quarter. You need to log on to speedtv.com now and cast your vote for the driver of the quarter. Voting closes soon. Welcome back to Long Beach. We ride with one of our two young rookies, the 26-year-old Puerto Rican, Jorge Diaz. And he is right behind his, his main rival in that Rookie of the Year battle, Bobby Sack. Uh, Stu Hainer has gotten around Bobby Sack. He's a little bit further off up in the distance. But there's always this race within a race. If you're a rookie, you're looking at being, when I was a rookie, I was racing against Dorsey Schrader. He won the championship that year. So uh, everything I did was always kind of colored against that. So I didn't feel I had a great year. But when you, if you're the fifth place finish and top rookie, you feel like you got the job done. They're in eighth and ninth. Bobby Sack, who you're looking at in the Revolution Motorsports Corvette. And Diaz, who we ride with, is in ninth. Neither of these two guys have raced in Long Beach before. No, they haven't. And this is where the, the experience shows up. You see Bobby Sack's car really starting to get loose. And you're also seeing Diaz's car wiggle around a good bit also. I, re I did my first ever Trans Am race here in, at Long Beach in 1987. Finished second to Scott Pruitt. He was running the factory Roush car. I was driving my dad's Capri. But I got about 10 laps into the race. And I, I realized that I was so far. Oh, oh, Sack locks up. Diaz comes up alongside. Sack was able to get it gathered back up. But where I was, why don't I just climb up here for a second and watch what's going on. <laughs> You're enjoying it, aren't you? I am, yeah. <laughs> the two rookies hard at it. And Bobby Sack certainly getting a little loose. Jorge Diaz lining him up. Down into turn six. through seven and down into turn eight now. The big long stretch coming up, heading into turn nine right now. Let's see if Jorge Diaz has anything for Sack. Diaz finished the better of the two in St. Pete and leads the Rookie of the Year title chase. Bobby Sack very determined to get one back this weekend. You'll notice the Puerto Rico Grand Prix sign on Bobby Sachs, uh, rather, on uh, Dehas Jr.'s car. His father is the promoter of that race, and it will be the final round of this year's Trans Am Series Championship. Brian? Lee, I just had a uh, conversation with Don Sack. I asked him, Bobby has moved back. He said, well, he was, had a quick spin out there, which we didn't see on camera. That moved him back. He was as high as six. But the car is a little bit loose right now, and a loose race car around this racetrack, guys, it's a handful. You know that, TK. That's where I was going with that. My, my very first race in 1987, I had a pretty good car and qualified, qualified, I think third. But man, did I have a handful. About 10 laps in, I wondered why I was able to stay with these guys. I thought my car was dynamite. The thing got looser and looser. Scott Pruitt, having been racing in the Trans Am for a while, knew he needed to start with a pretty good sized push, had his car dialed into that. These guys don't know that yet. They've only been in a handful of races. And that's part of the science of winning Trans Am races, is knowing what the car needs to feel like at the start. I thought it needed to be perfect at the start. If your car's perfect at the start, it's a handful later on. Race leader Scott Pruitt in the Rocket Sports Jaguar now has a 1.3 second lead over Boris said. Let's pay a quick credit to another rookie, Joey Scarello, who started last on the grid and who has worked his way. Although he is one lap down, he is up to 13th, just behind Randy Ruhlman. Coming round before they get notification of the fast five lap. And again, if you missed the St. Petersburg round, I'll remind you of this is yet another new rule, a new thing in Trans Am racing. The fast five lap simply means any drivers within five seconds on the designated lap on the within five seconds of the race leader will receive a bonus championship point. And at the moment, there is only one. That's Boris said. Miller's some nine and a half seconds back. Gentilozzi is some 16 seconds back. Calvin Fish. Well, Boris said has been a busy boy recently. He races a lot. He's going to be running in the Spa 24 hour race for BMW in a few months. And he was over there testing. Before he went to Spa, he went to the Nürburgring in a road car. And he said, man, that is the most awesome racetrack I've ever been on. Spa is nothing. He went to the track the next day to test at Spa. Going through Old Rouge, he had the left rear wheel brake at 150 miles an hour and hit the fence. 
So I guess Spa does have something. He said it was uh, something else to live through that crash. Spa didn't like being dismissed like that. 24-0, plus one to board. This is the gap I was talking about. It's 1.1 seconds right now. This is about the perfect gap, knowing that competition yellow might be coming for Scott Pruitt to maintain. When it was six, seven tenths, that was not enough to really give yourself some room to pick your way by traffic with any comfort. Not quite halfway through round two of the Trans Am series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup, the Grand Prix of Long Beach. Scott Pruitt has been doing it very comfortably at the moment. the difference in how he feeds the throttle in compared to when we were on board with the rookies guys were not you know they're getting you know you're taught pick the throttle up pick the throttle up and you think well god the guy up front couldn't possibly be as as gentle as as crew it is but those rookies if they go back and watch this tape they'll learn some things by riding on board with scott pruitt he's really being careful delaying a second before he picks up the throttle when he picks up the throttle he's got the car a lot straighter than those other guys who are picking it up so early Jorge Diaz slips through on the inside of Bobby Sack. Now let's see what he has. Can he come back on the young Puerto Rican? No, he can't. So Diaz Jr. in front of Bobby Sack for the first time today. Great battle here between these two young stars of the future in Trans Am Racing. Cal, what do you have for us? Well, we talked about conserving tyres. I mean, Boris Ed has actually been using second gear coming off the hairpin turn, so he doesn't spin the wheels up too much, but he found in the final practice yesterday on full tanks the car was too sluggish. He was having to use first gear, so it really relies on the experience of these guys to be very patient, as Tommy's been talking about, just squeezing on the power and not really over-abusing the rear tyres in the early going. And again, just to confirm for you, just the one driver to pick up a bonus championship point for the Fast Five lap, which was Boris said. So Diaz Jr. back on top in the rookie battle stakes. We'll have plenty more from Long Beach coming up. Stick with us here on Speed. Coming up this Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, catch some of the best motorsport vision in the world. Rally New Zealand, the latest round of the World Rally Championship, right here on Speed. The action continues here from the streets of Long Beach in California. And you ride with Stu Hayner, the Trenton Forging GMAC Commercial Finance Corvette. Hayner has been able to get ahead of his teammate Bobby Sack after that spin, he's ahead of Jorge Diaz. We now look at Max Lagarde and Randy Ruhlman. It's been a bit of a tough weekend for Randy. He had to change an engine after qualifying, got sent toward the back of the grid, and he's slowly working his way forward. He's now up to 11th. Two of the guys I raced against uh, during the, the bulk of my run as well. We talk about guys that have been around in Trans Am for a long time, and we... On behalf of everyone here at the Speed Team and in Trans Am Racing, we send our well wishes to Bob Ruman, who just has a few uh, health issues at the moment, and he will miss a few rounds of this year's series, but uh, we hear that Bob will be back. And I know that you're watching Bob High from everyone here at Long Beach, and a speedy recovery, and we'll see you soon. Randy Ruhlman has Max Lagarde's measure here. said that uh, at St. Pete they just had a few teething problems with the new chassis in the, uh, the Hard Motorsports Corvette. Also had some fuel cell problems. They seem to have got over those now and running nicely in 11th at the moment. Still on the lead lap but quite a ways back. And well, when we went to break, Boris had fallen back to three seconds behind Pruitt and I was wondering if maybe uh, he was starting to uh, to lose some pace relative to Scott, but he has run a couple quick laps and he's pulled it back to the closest it's been since the start of the, this race, a half a second off of Pruitt. There you see it. And uh, running a series of 23-second uh, laps. Likewise, I'm wondering if Paul Gentilosi has maybe his charges kind of stalled at about 17 seconds behind these guys. 
question is whether he's waiting for the competition yell or if he's taking more out of his tires in spite of what Nick Short said that we're, we're conserving that. Calvin, you got more on that? Well, exactly, TK. I think they are just waiting for that caution period. I mean, Nick is very comfortable that the car is good and the tires are good to a certain degree, but let's play this scenario. He said, we're going to wait and see how many cars are on the lead lap, and thinking it through, there's a rule in Trans Am that unless you're on the pace, unless you're on the lead lap, you need a move over when we go back to green. So I think if we get down to about six, seven cars on this lead lap, and then we get that caution period, don't be surprised to see Paul Genelosi pit for some fresh rubber, start six or seven, and then they'll really have a race car underneath him. That'd be something to see. It would certainly spice things up a bunch. Um, now, these guys up front, though, when they need to, Boris can still put in some pretty, some pretty quick laps. And I have not raced on the BF Goodrich radials, but from what I understand, they really hold up well. The bias plies that we used to run at the end, a set of new tires would have been a huge advantage. My understanding of the BFGs is, even if you overheat them, if you cool them off a little bit, they come back pretty well. So I can't speak firsthand to how big an advantage that would be to Paul. Brian Till, tell us more. I spoke with Chris Willis about Boris said he had dropped back to about a three second gap between he and Pruitt. And I asked Chris Willis, is that just traffic? He said, yeah, we're not in any hurry to burn up tires to catch up with Pruitt. We feel confident they're going to have that confident that competition yellow. And when they do, hell, we'll burn up the tires at the end after that competition yellow comes out. We're not going to do it up until that point in time. We're saving the car. 22 laps to go. We're well and truly over halfway in this one. And because of that, Scott Pruitt has gained again the bonus championship point for most laps led. Meanwhile, Jorge Diaz has caught Stu Hayner. So he's left Bobby Sack, and now he starts to apply the pressure. Looks on the inside and gets Stu Hayner. Nice move from the Puerto Rican. Seemed to do it pretty easily. He sure did. Uh, you know, you saw Hayner uh, going away from Diaz earlier, but. Uh, how things change, you know, that both maybe both of the revolution cars are a bit looser than they would care as the as the races progress and the fuel loads burned off. Might have started a little bit too neutral. Plenty more to come from the streets of Long Beach. Stick around. Can Scott Pruitt make it two from two? You're watching round two of the Trans Am series from the streets of Long Beach, and this young Puerto Rican, Jorge Diaz Jr., is on a charge. He now has Tommy Dreesey in his sights and has made up considerable ground over the past couple of laps. Whether he's burning his tires up or not, he's certainly spectacular. Now he sizes Dreesey up on the inside. This is great stuff, side by side with Tommy, and he makes it stick. We're coming up on Claudio Burton, who's smoking big wheel spin from Diaz as he pulls clear of Dreesey. Tommy back on the inside. Oh! Oh, what a shame. Dreesey tried to come back with a real bonsai down the inside and gave him a shot to the, the right rear. Oh, that's a real shame. He was really on the move. He's able to get going here. It looks like he's lost two or three positions. But he's able to get going here. Not too much damage on the car. It was just a slight tap from Dreesey. Well, Jorge Diaz Sr., I got to be a lot of emotion down here for you. I mean, he was doing a great job, a little bit of spin. Can he get it back? Uh, we hope he can. We have 19 uh, laps to go. We hope he can do it. He was cutting a, a, a second lap with uh, Sachs and uh, Hayner, so we hope that we can make it back. Yeah, that he can make it. Well, he's put on a hell of a job, a hell of a show so far. But, uh, Calvin, you got some problems down there with Tommy, huh? He's in, Brian, and there's a light scuff on the left front wheel. I'm not sure if that created this problem with the power steering, but right now the boys are going to work here trying to get him some power steering back. He can't get around these tight streets without it. So uh, tough break for Tom. He had a great run going there in this beautiful Jag. He certainly did. Randy Ruhlman is in trouble out on course. The Corvette for Derhag Motorsports is running at a very slow pace. There's Johnny Miller. We haven't seen much of Johnny today. He's running in third for Rocket Sports. And here's the two Revolution Motorsports cars. Oh, Bobby Sack got all out of shape and crunched Claudio Burton. And Greg Pickett snuck through. So it's been a, uh, a very profitable exercise there for Pickett. And he's just making his way forward as he wishes. Qualified ninth, now running in eighth. He went drop back a little bit, Greg Pickett, in the early stages of this race. Look at the damage on that panel, Esperante. Well, and Sack had caught, caught back up, made up all the ground that he lost when he spun, and it just pulled up onto the back of uh, 
just arrived at the corner with way too much speed. He was closing back up on the back of Hayner, and uh, Burton turned in when he had to, and uh, Bobby couldn't get the car turned and just drove into his door. Look how much speed he's carrying. He knows at this point he's in trouble. Almost drilled the back of his teammate. That's one of those moves where you know you're in trouble before everybody else knows you're in trouble. Here's our race leader, Scott Pruitt. He is in traffic. That's Simon Gregg immediately ahead. Look at this, Boris said. This is the closest we've seen this battle since the start of the race when Boris said drew alongside Scott Pruitt. It's Jaguar versus Ford Mustang. Boris on the inside. Great move on Simon Gregg. They split the De Haag Motorsports driver. Now Boris needs to try and hang with Pruitt. 17 laps left to run. Simon says, look out, and Boris said. Where, where am I going with that? Boris said, Simon says, anyway. <laughs> My crew used to refer to Boris as <laughs> Alanis Boris said. <laughs> He's still running second, and a very strong second at that. This race is far from over. Pruitt has been smooth and fast, exactly like he was in St. Petersburg at the season opener. Has not been in the car since then, as I mentioned earlier. So he just comes back to the race meeting, slots himself in and gets back on with the job. There's first and second. Third is still Johnny Miller from Paul Gentilosi, Michael Lewis. That's the top five. Stu Hayner, Greg Pickett, Bobby Sack recovered. He's in eighth just ahead of Jorge Diaz, so that battle will resume. They're only about four seconds apart on the road, and Max Lagarde in the Sol Camaro runs in 10. Tommy Dreese is back on track. Cal, can you tell us more? Yeah, they didn't get any fix done, so he's just going to have to tough it out. I spoke to, to Neville Agas, who's his uh, crew chief, and he said we weren't able to make a fix. We just need to get him back out there, try and get some points. Yeah, tough break for Tommy because he was running nicely. He was up there. Here is Burton, and this Panos is certainly well beaten up. The walking wounded. He's going to continue. This Jorge Diaz making his way by. Of course, Burton is a, a lap car. And Diaz, who we ride with now, is pushing as hard as he possibly can to make his way back up, rejoin that battle with Bobby Sack and make his way forward. This young Puerto Rican certainly has given us plenty of action today. Still loads to come. 16 laps left here at Long Beach. Stay with us. Morning. I'm Tommy Dreesey. Let me show you what we do. Come on in. Born and bred in Tinseltown, Tommy Dreesey has always been a part of Hollywood. And this James Bond of Trans Am plays a major role in promoting the latest box office hits. You name the movie, and more than likely, Tommy's promoted it. For 14 years, Dreesey Advertising has worked hand-in-hand -hand with movie giants like Universal Pictures, designing, engineering, and manufacturing cardboard standees for the film industry. The entire process is an in-house affair, from the creative design gurus to the computer-controlled cutting equipment. And to complete the promotional puzzle, Dreesey controls worldwide distribution as well. So the next time you go to the movies, keep an eye out for Tommy's 3D handiwork. Well, I'm going to show you how this process starts. It starts off with a designed mini mock-up. It's quarter scale. This is what's shown to the studios for final approval. Then it goes to an engineered full-size prototype. This is a work in progress right now. This project is uh, in the middle of its uh, manufacturing right now. And here's what the final piece will look like. It's going to be better than this. This is not a finished piece, but this is a piece that we're going through. And when it's done, it's going to be a really nice piece. And as a matter of fact, another project just came in, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Alex G, uh, coming to a theater near you. And Tommy Dreesey is coming to a racetrack near you. And when you see him, one thing's for sure, his car will have an eye-catching livery. So that's what Tommy does Monday to Friday, and this is what he does Saturday and Sunday, and it's not all going to plan, Calvin Fish, is it? Well, it's been a tough day for the 2000 winner here, Lee. He's been in and out of the pit lane several times. The power steering system has actually run off the electrical system, and they've got a voltage problem, and that's what's creating the issue with the power steering. It's coming in and going, and it's now affecting the other components on the race car as well. So they've shut all the ancillary stuff down, trying to get some voltage back. So long day for Tommy Dreesey. Let's go down to Brian. Yeah, down here with Max Lagarde, you know, Max, 
We talked to him in St. Pete. He had a great race. We were talking to his dad, and as soon as we started talking to his dad, the engine blew up. Max, first thing he said to me was, what, did you talk to my dad? I hope he didn't jinx me again, but it must not be you. You know, the water pump belt broke, and it just started, lost power steering, got hot, and we had to come in, so that's it. Obviously, good runs there and here running in the top 10. What is it? What do you got to do? I don't know. We got to go back home and do something <laughs> different because this isn't working. Well, he's showing that he's got the speed. He's got to have the luck, guys. He'll be there. We ride again with our race leader, Scott Pruitt. We have 11 laps to go. There's been a lot of talk, Tommy Kendall, about this competition yellow, but it is at the discretion of Trans Am. It may not happen. This might be a genuine hard, hard race head-to-head -head between Seth and Pruitt to the end. Well, you certainly don't need it with the battle going on up front, but if you, oh, as we say that, the full course caution comes out. I was gonna say, but how much would, better would it be if you threw another uh, threw another car up in there in the in the name of Paul Genalozzi? Now, I, I'm getting the sense with him falling back like he did that he might have taken more out of his tires than, than he hoped, and uh, so he might not be the threat that, that maybe we think he's gonna be, but these guys up front are certainly gonna go at it hammer and tong as soon as they go green. And we hear that there needs to be a bit of a general cleanup. That was the cone. It got caught uh, underneath Marvin Jones's car and also Boris Sed's car. It got dumped halfway down Shoreline Drive, so that will be cleaned up. Also, Greg Nolte you saw out on the track. Here's a replay here of Marvin Jones's car. That was the cone that was caught underneath. So there'll be a general cleanup and the field will pack up. So that will bring Johnny Miller right up on the back of Boris Said. Gentilozzi up with Miller. Hayner up with Gentilozzi. Greg Pickett now running in a very strong sixth. Jorge Diaz, while we were away, has got ahead of Bobby Sack. He's seventh. Lewis is now ninth. And Joey Scarello, who's our third rookie, started last, now runs tenth. Doing a nice job today on his return to the, to the championship. Incidentally, Claudio Burton has received a, uh, a black flag, mainly just because of the uh, the shape his car is in. It's beaten and battered and a little dangerous to the other competitors. So we're under caution here at Long Beach for the first time today, and we are going to have a very fast and furious final 10 laps. The Formula One World Championship continues after three already very exciting rounds. Round four comes to you from Imola in Italy, the San Marino Grand Prix, and you can catch qualifying from 8 in the morning. That's, of course, Eastern Live this coming Friday. Saturday is final qualifying, and, of course, the race on Sunday, 7.30 in the morning, Eastern. Catch that. Of course, earlier here today, great day for young AJ Armendinger, who won his first ever Toyota Atlantic race. The Champ Car race was won by Paul Tracy, his third consecutive win this weekend. Plenty of other motorsport going on around the world. Jeff Gordon won at Martinsville, and Scott Sharp won at the first ever IRL race in Japan at the Twin Ring Motegi circuit. A good victory for him, Brian. Oh, absolutely, Lee. And, you know, the pickets down here are really cheering him on. For those of you who aren't aware of it, that's uh, mom and dad-in-law, Penny and Greg Pickett. Uh, their daughter is married to Scott Sharp, so they were certainly cheering him on. And the team down here cheering on Greg. He's second on all-time top five, second uh, in all-time starts in Trans Am. And Mike Haller and his crew chief says that, you know, you know age and experience still may, may win over youth and exuberance. After all the fiberglass clears in turn one, G-Man might just end up with a top three, Calvin. Well, a quick update on the leaders now with their tyre situation. I've checked in with everyone. Scott Pruitt's men say he was starting to get a little loose there before we went to caution, so he may be struggling. Boris's guy said, we are perfect, great balance. Johnny Miller said, we're struggling too with a loose car. And Paul Genelosi, Nick Shaw said, we're not going to gamble and bring him in. We think the tyres are good. We've got a strong race car for this final seven-lap sprint. Tommy Kendall, what's your shakedown of this? You're a four-times Trans Am champion. Was Pruitt just being conservative out there? Has Boris said got a shot at this? Is Genelosi still in the mix? I think it's wide open. Scott's been, Scott is really experienced and really smart. Uh, he was complaining about the car being loose on a long run uh, in on Friday's practice. So uh, be interesting to see nobody's in great shape. They've, they've got almost 100 miles on these tires. Here we go. Six laps left to run on the streets of Long Beach. Scott Pruitt leads them down into turn one. Boris said Johnny Miller. And the boss of Rocket Sports and Trans Am, Paul Gentilosi running in fourth. Behind him, Stu Hayner, then Greg Pickett. Look at Johnny Miller, lights it up out of turn one, trying to stay with Boris Sen and get up there with his Rocket Sports teammate. And Miller hasn't shown any uh, fight early on, and maybe he was saving it all for the end. So this is where, obviously, where everyone lays their cards on the table. Paul's taking a lot of out of his tires, coming all the way from the back. 
You see him really hanging the back end out coming off turn five there. Those front three are starting to pull away from Paul. In a nice strong run for Johnny Miller today. He struggled earlier in the weekend with some setup issues, but has been faultless today in the Eaton Cutler Hammer Car. About 140 guests and VIPs here. So a very special weekend for Johnny Miller. And we have just had confirmation that this will be a timed race, Tommy Kendall, around seven minutes to go. That's right, so the guys will break it down and figure, look at Boris. We had the best finish in Trans Am racing history here on the streets of Long Beach last year. Will we Just have another? Time break, time break. Seven minutes to go, Scott. Probably about three laps. You hear Scott Pruitt being told there by Troy Cowgill that there's just seven minutes to go. As he keeps a very watchful eye on Boris said, the reigning champion. Here comes Boris on the inside, not quite close enough. And that close up of the hairpin gave us a great shot of the dive planes on the front of, look at Boris, right in front of those front fenders, those black things are dive planes that are a result of the recent wind tunnel testing that the SCCA undertook to give Boris and the Mustangs a little bit of help. Look at this. I think, I mean, Boris definitely has more car than Pruitt at this point. And those dive planes are just temporary. They will have a whole new front end coming for that Mustang at the next round. But Sed is not done with yet. He is really giving Pruitt a good workout here. On the inside, and he's got it. The first lead change. Boris Sed is there. And that's right where it started to come apart last year for Boris. But look at this. He has a lot of car under him. He's starting to pull back away. And Johnny Miller starts to size up Scott Pruitt as well. So again, this is not a lap count. We are on a timed race, so the minutes are winding down. Said Pruitt and Johnny Miller. Calvin. Well, we just checked in with Scott Pruitt's crew. He said, what is he saying? He said, he is saying nothing. It's just gonna be a flat out sprint to the finish. There's nothing we can do for him, but they did realize that the car got loose on Scott Pruitt and all of the crew chiefs really got it accurate. Boris Sed's crew thought he had a well-balanced race car and it looks like he might have the legs on Scott Pruitt. Talk about make a statement, but there's three or four laps to go, boys. It's gonna be fun. Well, he gave us a stunning performance at St. Petersburg where he came from the back of the grid to second. He started up front and now he runs right at the very front. We'll take a quick break and be back with more with the finish from Long Beach. Welcome back to the Grand Prix of Long Beach for the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tyres Cup. The exciting closing stages. And look at this, Tommy Kendall. Boris said has opened up a gap on Scott Pruitt. Yeah, Pruitt is just hanging on at this point. Boris really uh, did a good job of, of saving them and keeping it under him. That, you can see Pruitt really fighting to get the traction to the ground. Miller got a little too close, had to back off there coming onto the, the back straightaway. But uh, Calvin said earlier, uh, he was speculating as to whether Boris wanted to send a message. I said, absolutely. See Jen Losey getting a little lock up at the end of the straight there. But this is exactly, like I said, Boris says, hey, I'm the champion here. Don't look right past me. And so he really wanted to make a statement. Oh, Michael Lewis has crunched his jag. Now, I can't see any damage on it. Michael Lewis trying to uh, get going. I believe this is up in turn nine at the end of the back stretch. And it seems as though that car is going nowhere. Meanwhile, battle for second continues. The teammates, we've got three teammates together there. The only one missing from this equation is Tommy Dreesey, Pruitt, Miller, and Jen Losey, all three Rocket Sports drivers. Let's see if we can find out what happened to Mike Lewis. Here's the replay. Simply locked it all up, coming up into turn nine. That was where Paul was uh, was fighting it coming in there, and Lewis got in trouble early in the break zone. So indeed, he didn't hit anything, just a massive lockup. Let's get back to it. The closing stages. Pruitt is defending. Meanwhile, Boris said goodbye. He is out of there. Boris said this has has this one under control. Two and a half seconds, the margin last time round over Scott Pruitt, then Miller, then Gentilozzi. Remember that Boris said has not won on the streets of Long Beach. He came very close last year, but Gentilozzi had his measure. Brian. Lee, I just talked to Chris Willis, and he looked at me and gave me a wink, and he said, I don't think Scott expected to get past there. And then he looked at me and said, so far, everything's going according to plan, just the way we had it all scheduled out, guys. 
Chris Willis, of course, the guy who engineers. Boris Seds, Ford Mustang, second place, Scott Pruitt. And there is your race leader. It's now out to three seconds, Calvin Fish, the lead margin. I don't think Scott has anything for him. I just checked in with Troy Cowgill, and he says, Scott just says the car has gone wicked loose like we had early in the weekend. They thought they got a handle on the bounce. They made a bunch of suspension changes, trying to get the rear end hooked up. But when the car gets low with a low fuel load, the right eye comes up TK, and with 100 miles nearly on these tires, that's when it's going to be at its worst. They do have some adjustment in the car. They've got the adjustable sway bars, but he's obviously out of adjustment. That's one thing that I was talking about, where you try to get in the sweet spot. You, once you get dialed into this car, and once Scott get used to this car, he'll know exactly how he wants those adjusters set at the start of the race to cope with this kind of a situation. His teammate, Johnny Miller, you saw Scott defending the inside, and Miller has a run. Johnny Miller on the inside of his teammate, Scott Pruitt, side by side, the two Rocket Sports cars. Coming up into turn nine, Miller will have the preferred line, and Johnny's there. The Eaton Cutler Hammer Jaguar slips up into second place. Now, what can Pruitt, does Pruitt have anything to come back on Johnny Miller? This will be your last lap, Scott, last lap. Final lap, white flag is out for Boris Said. Came from the back of the field to second, the reigning champion in St. Petersburg. Now he has just one lap left to run, less than two miles to notch up his first victory on the streets of Long Beach. We talked about making a statement here today for Boris said What a statement Johnny Miller is making up against his more fancy teammates. Scott Pruitt, Paul Genalozzi, and he's really been wicked fast here at Long Beach over the year. Four podiums in the six runs that he's had here, and he's looking strong for another one today. Boris said is all fired up coming into this round. Trans Am asked all of their drivers and teams to display some decals uh, for either the Army, the Air Force, the Marines, the Navy, or the Coast Guard as a mark of respect for what the armed forces have done overseas. Boris said, yeah, man, absolutely. I'll take one for the Marines. He's got a new short version haircut. He's dedicated that to the Marines. He said he wanted to enlist, but they wouldn't let him enlist for just six months. So he is all fired up, and he is on his way to what's been a very well-calculated victory. Well, he said at the start, he made the analogy to the armed forces. He said, I plan to do the same thing that our armed forces. I've got a better better piece, a better plan, and we're going to go out there and kick their uh, you-know-what. And uh, I'll tell you what, he has had plenty left here. Boris said this will be Trans Am victory number 12. It's number one for 2003, and Big Boris is pumped. Said does it on the streets of Long Beach. Johnny Miller, a well-deserved second. Threw it in for third. Gentilosi and Jorge Diaz, Jr., the best of the rookie. And Greg Pickett looks like he may have run out of fuel. Struggling to come across the line. Lost a couple of positions right at the end. But the ACS Express team, along with their new sponsors, New Century Mortgage, absolutely delighted. And Set is your man today. Well done, Boris. Welcome back to the streets of Long Beach. Boris said pulls the car in a victory lane, 12th time in his career. Going to pull Boris out here. Boris, what a run here today. I'm sure you want to make a statement. You got Scott Pro out there on the racetrack, and it was a beautiful move you put on him. I mean, it's great. I mean, we got a lot of new sponsors, New Century Mortgage. They can get money to anyone faster than anybody. Go to new newcentury.com. They're great. But, uh, I mean, the race is one thing, but in the back of my mind, I mean, in a bigger picture, you got... All I think about is the military, our men and women in armed services over there, overseas. I'm so proud of them. I mean, uh, all the men and women, thanks for the job you're doing over there to keep America safe. feel great. Thanks. How confident were you that you had a race car for this final sprint? Everyone was waiting for the yellow, and I'm sure Scott was pacing his car as well. Did you, think, did you know you had enough, or were you unsure? I was a little unsure. I didn't know how hard he was using his car. I thought right at the end before the yellow came out, I had a shot I could have gone by him, and I picked my spot where I was going to try to pass him, and it worked out. But uh, he's a great racer, and we were just, uh, I don't think we were saving much, either him or me. But, uh, I mean, New Century Mortgage, Qualcomm, uh, everybody at GE Access, thanks a lot for all your support, and everyone at AC and my crew. Got to dedicate this race to Roy Baker. He's our manager, lost his life last year. Maureen, hope everything's good with you. Great thoughts there. Let's go over to Brian Tail. Johnny Miller, it says right here, an army of one, and that was pretty much you there at the end. It looks like you saved enough car for Scott there at the end. Did you think you had anything for Boris, any hopes at all for that? Yeah, I think we actually did. Uh, the car was not as bad as I thought it'd be on a restart. You know, it started to come back in the middle, 
but we had so much of a space, I thought, you know, eh, this isn't going to go this whole way. So we were real patient, and, uh, you know, there at the end, Scotty, got, Scotty and I got into it, and I was like, oh, come on, man. I was wanting to go after Boris. And, uh, but, um, you know, it was a fun race, and uh, I, we're, we're in this deal. I, I tell you, I, um, I really, um, we got some new sponsorship on the car, and we're hoping to finish up and do well in a championship here, and maybe this will do it. Well, that's two podiums and two races, so obviously your championship hopes still very much alive. Calvin? Well, Scott Pruitt, you had the lead there, but when we went back to green, it seemed like the tires had gone away a little bit. Yeah, you know, I was running a pretty hard pace. That was one of the things you were fighting with on the rear, and just the lack of experience, just, you know, getting through a whole race, understanding how hard you can chase those rears. Just kind of overachieved today. Just had nothing left on the rear. It's going to be a great battle, though. I mean, Boris here, defending champion. I mean, he certainly showed his muscle here today. And uh, you talk about lack of experience. You're just saying you need a bit more time with this car? Yeah, a bit more time and understanding how hard you can push these tires. I mean, that's one of the things you learn after not being in the series for a long time. Boris did a great job. Johnny did a great job. Great effort this weekend, but uh, I got to do a little homework. Well, he still has the championship lead by five points, we believe, over Boris said. He certainly does, and it's a good, solid result, and it was a very entertaining day. This was the move. Boris said on the inside of Scott Pruitt, they battled hard all race long, and in the end, Boris came out on top. Join us after the break. We'll wrap it up here at Long Beach. Another memorable day here at Long Beach, and Boris said will remember this one for a long time. His first win on these famous streets, and what about... Johnny Lightning, Johnny Miller, a stunning result in second to outdo Scott Pruitt. Gentilosi fought hard, and Jorge Diaz, he is definitely one to watch for the future. Stu Hayner, Greg Pickett, sadly, at the end there, lost a couple of positions. Sack Lewis and Joey Scarello on his return, came from all the way last on the grid to finish in the top ten. Let's take a look at the points after round two of this year's championship. Scott Pruitt still will have the lead, but it's only by three. We thought it was by five, but it's actually only by three. And Miller is certainly in the hunt as well. How many races will Paul Gentilosi do this year? Yet to be sure on that, but Pruitt still leads the way. The next round of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tyres Cup comes your way. Sunday, May 25 here on Speed, 2 p.m. Eastern. Tommy Kendall, it was a delight to have you in the announce booth. Your thoughts on this race today? I'll tell you what, last year's finish and this one shows you why this series is so popular and it's been around for as long as it has. Uh, if you get all three main protagonists starting up there without any coming from the back, you won't need any of those competition yellows. But it, it was fun to be back, even if it was only in the booth, and uh, I'll be watching on the couch from here on out. Well, it was lovely to have you here, and uh, what a race. Well, Pruitt has dominated qualifying, but two races, two different winners. It looks like Sed and Scott are going to go at it hard all year long. Thanks to Calvin Fish and Brian Till for their hard work in the pits. On behalf of Tommy Kendall, I'm Lee Diffie. Thanks for joining us here at Long Beach.